It's all about humanity. Hello, model citizens. Welcome to Manity Junction. My name is Heath. Tonight on Trains and Tech, we are going to do uh, a little bit more with the organization theme. Uh, if you can kind of spot just over my cor corner of my head, you can see it's still a mess, still a lot to uh, organize, a lot to get done, but uh, I've got a plan. And I thought, you know, we'll just, we'll take a little bit off the edge today and, uh, We'll see how things go. Uh, we do have a poll going. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny to see how the how the numbers change. But the poll is: Do you keep your boxes, cases, and put your rolling stock back in the correct boxes or cases? Uh, Forty-six percent of people are currently saying every piece has the correct box. Uh, Thirty-five percent currently some I keep, some I don't. Four percent says I throw all the boxes away. And 16%, which is probably the category I would fall in, uh, I'm OCD, so you know the answer. Uh, in my case, I do try and uh, keep everything in the proper boxes, but uh, the, the short of the gist of the problem is some of the boxes just don't have any, well, this I picked one up that does, but some don't have enough detail to, to be able to identify what's in it. So... I'll show you. I'll show you what the plan is. It's not something I came up with. It's something I saw that I thought was a good idea, and I'm going to give it a try. So we'll see how that goes. But let's take a look, see who's joining us tonight. Uh, first in the chat uh, was not Dwight Curley. Uh, it was actually Wigwag Workshop. Stephen was here yesterday uh, stopping by to say hello. Uh, Thomas Grassi's in the house. John from Schuylkill River Valley. Roy Eltham's here. Roger Coleman joining us as well. Rusty from Possum Bayou is here. Norman Rowe in the house. Nathan Five Chime is here. Andrew, Mr. Pictovid. Andrew, I have a question for you. Uh, Mr. Jimbo Trains is here. Lauren Hurwitz in the house. Kyle Stevens is here. Dwight 
Curly Express, who I believe was number two. Uh, John Train BFGR, who might also be able to answer my question. Uh, James Galton is here. Grandpa Rails JD in the house. Eddie Pappert's here. Dragon Ball DB Tech is here. Gary Creepy013. Tim from 3P. C C Tim from CP. 368 Productions. I never thought that was hard to say before tonight. Uh, we get Andrew Step in the house. Quest Western is here as well and not at the NMRA convention for some reason. Uh, but I hope everyone is having a fantastic evening. Thanks all for being here. Before this all started, we were having a conversation over on Discord. We love talking tech over there. We love just... Uh, we love just chatting about stuff. So if you're into the Discord thing, check out uh, some of the links in the description. Come over to Discord, all that kind of stuff. Uh, stuff is there. So, so yeah. Uh, Cameron wants to know what kind of mischief bot uh, we can get in tonight. And I, I don't think it shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't, although it could potentially turn into an unboxing. So, you know, I don't know. Do we do we consider opening up jewel cases and unboxing if you can already see what's in them because it's a clear jewel case? Uh, I have heard a lot of people say what uh, Rick from RNL Railroad said. I keep only the engine boxes, which seems to be, I think, pretty pretty common. Uh, Martin, the prize for being first is absolutely nothing. Uh, Quest Western said I just came from the NMRA MCOR meetup. And I don't remember what that means, but he did tell us when he sent us the picture of the pizza what that meant. And I just don't remember what it is now. Uh, Mid-central region, maybe something like that. Uh, Talking Tech must be bragging about your Teddy Ruxpins. Man, those were cool, weren't they? Uh, <laughs> Gary says he can only stay for four hours. Uh, I've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I got 15 jewel cases on my bench. I got a couple more prepped up there. So 15 jewel cases. We should get that done in about uh, four hours. Yeah, Roger, and this is kind of where I'm at as well. I, I think I'm going to be keeping all the boxes because uh, I, I do think at some point they're probably going to want to go into the boxes, back into the boxes. And there we go, mid-continent. Don says mid-continent. Um, they're probably going to want to go back into the boxes. And, you know, for some of them, it's easy, right? There's just, there's enough descriptions on the cases. It's easy to figure out, you know, what's what. But on the time saver, which is sitting over here, uh, I've got these 15 great northern cars. A lot of them fall under uh, this... Let's see if I can find one now that I'm talking about it. Let's see if here we go. A lot of them say special run on the bottom. And um, this this was sort of a special run from microtrains, but in a lot of cases it it, it just means there's nothing on the oh, there's nothing on the ends that would tell you which car goes in this case. So essentially, once I take this car out of here, I would have absolutely no idea whether it actually goes back in this case or not. And, you know, I, I'm kind of OCD, I guess, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Exactly, right? You want to make it easy for them to sell. Uh, so I, I got this set of 15 cars. Uh, I bought them all from the same person. They came as a whole set. Some of them had these little tags on them, which I think were the month and year that it was supposedly released. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, some of them do have the microtrains uh, price tags on them, which are pretty cool. So I do kind of want to get them back in the right boxes. As I was going through them the last time, trying to figure out which boxes to put them back into, what I noticed was this box right here. And if you look at, so that's the car in the box. And what I realized they had done was they had printed out, cut out, and put a picture of the car on the bottom of the case. So now I know, you know, 2510, which is what this car goes in this case. And I said, that's pretty darn cool. 
That is pretty darn awesome. Yeah. Uh, you go on eBay and you look for some Lionel or American Flyer boxes and they're like $200. And you're like, oh, that's got to be for the train too. It's like, no, that's just for the box. Uh, yeah. Especially with the N scale stuff, they don't take up a lot of space. The G scale stuff takes up a huge amount of space, which is just kind of insane. But um, so I found, so these two cars had pictures on them. Uh, this one is a picture under the sticker, but none of the other ones did. Um, I also noticed these cases have holes in them, which I don't know why they do, but anyway, these guys had pictures and I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make some pictures and you can already see, I got pictures over here, but, but we'll get there. We'll get here in one second. So yeah, I thought this was a really good idea, but then I had to figure out how in the heck am I going to take all of these boxes back here, right? All, all of these, all of these. All of these here, all this stuff over here. I don't know if you can see these. Over, yeah, you can kind of make out these over here. You know, I, I'm going to need to somehow take pictures of all this stuff. And then somehow I'm going to need to get all these. I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So what eventually I figured was the way to kind of come close to the size would be if I took them and I made an eight and a half by 11 box on, on my bench. And I, I basically lined them all up, took a picture of them on this eight and a half by 11 square. Then I cropped my image to eight and a half by 11 and I printed it out. So now I've got a piece of paper kind of matches. It's close enough. Right, it's close enough. Uh, I purchased a crypt. <laughs> that would actually be, th this is my crypt, right? Locked in this room right here. Uh, Bernard, it is a little bit of a train store. Uh, probably not as much as your uh, studio though, in some, some cases. So how do you find out which box the ones you've already removed went to? Well, if you look back at my layout, which let's see, you can kind of see it here, right? There, there is nothing on this right now. Even if we go over to the time saver, the only thing on the time saver right now is this uh, locomotive that you can see right there in the center. What I used to do when I would take things out of the boxes is I would literally line all the cases up. So if, if I took them out and connected them up, I, I would just line them all up in a row so that I could put them all back. But then that didn't work for a switching puzzle. That works if you're doing like continuous running. But once you start doing a switching puzzle and things get all mixed up. So what I ended up doing was like some of these would say on them. Um, some of them have like just the 20176. So I know it's a standard boxcar single door, but I don't know what it is. So I would go online, I would search microtrains 20176, and then I found that that is a picture of 18588. So then I put 18588 in 20176. Now, what I'm gonna do though, is now I've got down here on the bottom of this, let's make this wider again, right here, I've got the picture of this. So we're gonna cut this out. And just like they did with this one, I'm gonna put the picture in the bottom of it. So the next time I take the case out, I know exactly which car goes in which case. So yes, a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, Dwight, where did I get which boxes from? All, all of these boxes on the wall? Uh, whenever my wife says I have too many trains, I show her a video of your room and tell her it's 20 by 10. It's not 20 by 10. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Dennis, uh, my trains go on the layout or on storage shelves for easy access. So what this is going to allow me to do by labeling the cases is I could take the... <laughs> yes. Um... What I can do now is by labeling all the cases, I can take stuff out. I can put them on my, uh, in my staging yard and like just put the boxes somewhere and not worry about it anymore. Uh, 
so that's, you know, that's the big plan. And then the other great thing is I can take, Roy Elfham got me these, uh, these really nice boxes that have the foam in them. And these are like perfect size to like take a train or two to a club layout. So now I can ditch these plastic boxes and uh, put a couple consists of stuff in there and everything will be happy. So uh, Dwight wants to know where I get the plastic boxes from. When you buy N-Scale, for whatever reason, N-Scale comes in plastic boxes for the most part. For the most part. I do have some uh, Intermountain that came in cardboard boxes, but for the most part, uh, everything you get in N-Scale, N-Z-Scale, seems to come in plastic. So like here's an Atlas plastic jewel case. So, so there you go. Who predicted the future? Trenton Ingalls head. Oh, hey, I predicted the future. I don't know what that means. Um, I know Quest Modern keeps, oh, it's, <laughs> uh, I know Quest Modern keeps padded boxes for all their matching cars. Pretty nifty for a quick mix and match build. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about starting to get some of this stuff into the boxes and stuff. Somebody mentioned inventory, right? I should probably have done the inventory first um, and then done and then do this because if I don't do the inventory and I start pulling cars out, they're going to be hard to inventory because I won't know what I've inventoried and what I haven't inventoried. Uh, I'm way behind. I still only have three mocha lo locomotives. Use a SKU number. Um, I did think of, uh, you know, barcoding them and scanning them and stuff. But uh, yes, yeah, so the picture, the picture I'm going to put on the bottom like in this. So you can, so it stays in the, it's, it's under the paper insert. Uh, somebody said, why don't you just write the car number on the insert? So here's why I can't write the car number on the insert. There are no car numbers on any of these, right? So yes, I could do a binder as well. Uh, I just, um, actually that's kind of interesting, right? I could just print two of these. If I just printed two of these and then put it in a binder, I would be, uh, I'd be set to go. Uh, Ron, you didn't miss anything. I haven't even opened a single box yet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> haven't gotten to the RFID tags yet, uh, but but we're getting there. <laughs> Joe, come on now. I'm sure she's a lovely woman. Uh, but that's why I can't write numbers on stuff, because a lot of the circus stuff doesn't have any number on it. So that's why, I mean, yes, for this stuff, I could just write a number somewhere on the box. The other thing is where a lot of the value comes in the resale of this is that it's got the real insert, it's got the price tag on it, the jewel case is in nice condition and stuff like that. So I, I think this is gonna work out uh, kind of nicely. We're gonna try it. But for tonight, the goal is basically to at least get these 15 great Northern box cars back onto the time saver uh, so that people can start running the time saver again if they want. What did Norman mean? What did Norman say? Now I forget. Um, yeah, so plastic storage boxes, I have, and I don't have a camera so you can see them, but I do have like, you know, these, these kind of plastic drawers. Um, if I had more space, these are actually really great for uh, storage as well. But um, yeah. You know, the, so the other reason not to really just put, oh, come on. The other reason not to just kind of put numbers on stuff is, you know, God forbid I'm not the one actually repacking this stuff. It'll be a little easier for people to, um, uh, it'll be a little bit easier for other people to, to do it if needed. Uh, Dave BNS Van Scale, not on the bottom, Heath, above the paper liner, below the plastic. Oh, so when you're looking in it this way, I see what he, I see what you're saying. So what you're saying is when I take this car out, put it so you can see it here. 
So when you're, when you're gonna put this car back in, I'm looking at the picture. That's, uh, now I can't decide. I may like that idea better than putting them on the bottom. Yeah, I, you know, I'm starting to think, I've, I've got the images of these already. Um, I, I am kind of liking that idea. It's just, as I go through and take the pictures, just print a, print a second binder. Um, I took my own pictures. Uh, so for people that missed it, let's, let's just widen out again a little bit and just talk about this. To get the picture scaled to about the right size, what I did is I made an eight and a half by 11 box on my desk over here, right? So this box is about the size of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So then what I did was I took and I filled the eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with the, with the cars, took a picture of that, and then I cropped my image to the eight and a half by 11 and then just printed it out actual size on the paper. So <laughs> James says too much work. Hey, if someone's got a better way for me to be able to get all these cars back into the right cases, which it's kind of important to me. I, you know, I don't know. Is it really important in the big grand scheme of life? Probably not but I'll be able to sleep better knowing that I'll be able to get all the cars back into the right boxes. So we're going to get out a metal, um, a metal ruler, just because that's what I have. And we are going to, uh, so the circus one we'll get to in a little bit. We're gonna start with, with the great Northern ones. So here, see, it's like, so here's another circus one, right? There, there are no car numbers on any of these. So there's no way on any of these to really identify them, except for, you know, tiger, gorilla, polar bear, or whatever. But by picture, it's just, it's just easier. So we're gonna start with this one. Um, yes, exactly, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Osmerica says he's got a great way, just leave them in the boxes. and that. That would be one way to do it. You could just leave them in the boxes, but you know, uh, this was a uh, blade holder that I was recommended. It's Olfa, O-L-F-A, and I like it. It, it, uh, it loosens and tightens really nicely, and it's got a nice little grip on it. So this is a newer one. It's having problems with my other one. Uh, tightening it up didn't, didn't work very well, so. Mr. Jimbo Trains, we all have our ideas we like, so if it suits you, that's what matters. Yeah, you know, obviously I didn't come up with it because somebody put that picture in there. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not the first guy to, the first guy to think of it. Let's, let's see, let's try whoever's idea this was that I can't remember now. Let's try putting them under the plastic. See, this, this unboxing could take a while. <laughs> you know? John, you don't, you don't, you don't have to do that yet. We're not quite there yet. Yeah, Mystic, I, I get that it, I get that it's probably a little OCD, but you know, I, I do honestly think that at some point this is going to help with the resale value. Um, I don't really know why I think that, but I do think that. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so what do people think? Do they like it inside, uh, inside under the plastic so that when you're loading the cars in, the picture is under the car, or do you like it on the back of the box? See, this way here, you could actually read what's on the back of the box. And, it, and, and Microtrains actually put some pretty cool uh, stuff to read on the back of the box. So I, I do think I actually like it on the inside. Grandpa Rails, so a little uh, super chat support for the Band-Aids. I really appreciate it. I hope, I hope I don't need to pull out the Band-Aids, but I might, I might. Uh, I, Steve says, I like watching these live streams. I've gotten through the Tolkien Harry Potter and I'm in the middle of War and Peace. Yeah, see, you know, you don't, uh, you don't need to mess around on my live streams because 
you know when you come back, we'll be in the same exact spot as when we left. So I, I'm liking this, uh, I'm liking this picture underneath the plastic. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with that. We're gonna make that happen. I just realized that as I'm moving the picture, I don't actually need to put the car back in the box. I can put the car back on the layout. So I'm going to put the car back on the layout. So let's just keep, let's keep going. Yeah, inside. A lot of people are saying, put them on the inside, 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 inside. I, I'm, I'm agreeing with people. I, you, you have me convinced. This one's a little tight. I'm half tempted to trim it, but I think I won't. We'll just shove it back in there. And now, the next time I go to put a car in here, I am going to know exactly which car goes in it. That's pretty awesome. I don't know why. This makes me happy. <laughs> Novel idea. I think so, too. I'm enjoying it. It, uh... It's something, it's something that's for sure. And we got 35 minutes, so we'll see how many, uh, we'll see how many of these I can actually get done in 35 minutes. I suspect, I suspect I'll be able to get done quite a few, maybe. Although at the rate that I keep, uh, store them in the upside down, that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, can ink rub off on the car? Uh, the, the paper, the paper is the paper is actually under plastic so there's a plastic piece here and the paper is underneath it so they can't um so they won't be able to touch they won't be able to touch so uh i'm not i'm not too worried about it i, I think they'll be okay uh don't you have cars that are the same with different numbers i do yes so uh, like the pacemaker cars, right? I've got a whole bunch of pacemaker cars with different numbers. So by having the picture with the number on it, it'll be easy, uh, it'll be easy to do it. Yeah, I, I am sure uh, somebody is going to, uh, going to do that. Uh, nothing happens in 35 minutes except that it's one hour and you know, I'm sure you guys will be very tired of me opening boxes for a whole uh, 35 minutes straight, let alone any more time. Uh, but you know, we'll we'll see. So we're just gonna we're just gonna slice these down. Hopefully, I'm cutting hard enough that I don't need to do this. Because if I tear one of these, then I got to go back upstairs, reprint them. You know, <laughs> don't worry. You don't need to call anybody yet. No, nothing's. Uh, Nothing is, nothing's getting cut yet. We're, we're okay. But yeah, 45 calls to 911. I'm, lo I'm looking in the chat trying to see who, how many people in the chat uh, have my uh, address to know how many people are going to uh, gonna be calling. So let's pull these out. Oh, see, <laughs> it's funny. On this one, I don't know how well you can see it depending on your screen size. Uh, but I didn't have the door closed. So instead of Great Northern, it says GRAT Northern. Northern. All right, so 18, let's look at this one right here. 18588. So let's find that one over here on the side. 18588. So if I cut this here, and it, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut them smallish so they fit in the box nice and easy. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to make them perfect. Um, as as OCD as I am, I'm not going to worry about them being perfect. We're just going to make them. We're just going to make them fit. So this car can now go over, back onto the time saver, and my chair is in the way, and I can't get to the, can't get to the the layout. Um, so that car is on there now. Now we come back here. And we take this plastic out. We're gonna throw this underneath. I like the inside idea. I would not have come up with that. See, so this is a, 
this is a good reason why we're doing this live. Uh, got that on the inside now. Now I can get a blue tub. I can throw all these plastic. Here, see, here's where we're going. I can get a blue tub. I can take all these. I can now put these in storage, which then is going to free up all that shelf space. And then you know what's going to happen on that shelf space. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yeah. Uh, Norman, the train inspector is doing fantastic. She's starting to get really rambunctious and getting uh, harder and harder to keep her from uh, jumping on things, which is which is a good sign that uh, things are going better. So we're uh, we're very happy that uh, things are things are progressing well. So thank you for asking. Uh, I don't have a paper slicer. That would be pretty awesome, though, wouldn't it? So here's the next one. See, this is kind of, this is kind of like an unboxing, right? I mean, this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's an unboxing, but it's not an unboxing. It's kind of a, I don't know, what, what would you call this? What kind of unboxing is this? Um, now, what I'm not marking on here is like these, these cars originally came with pre-1996 couplers and pizza cutter wheels and all that stuff. And, and that's all been upgraded. So I'm not marking that, you know, I'm just, I'm just marking, you know, other stuff. Uh, if you clear the shelves, uh, you could build a giant helix in the room. I could, yeah, just a helix. <laughs> yeah. You know, Cameron, I might, you, you know what I will do is I'll probably, uh, I'll probably have to uh, get a new scale. Probably have to start modeling another, another scale. Uh, John from Mystic says, what's your favorite railroad besides circus stuff? New York Central. Uh, probably not New York Central, probably more uh, Pennsylvania Railroad stuff. Uh, New York Central's probably a close second. I live on the west side of New York, and New York Central did go down the west side, but Pennsylvania Station's on the west side, whereas New York Central's on the east side, so... You know, I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Okay, so here's a good example. This car is 3486. This car is 3488. They both look very similar. Uh, both of these boxes have no, uh, no labels on them whatsoever. So without the picture, I wouldn't have any idea which box Goes nowhere. Yeah, I'm missing T-scale. I don't know that I need to clear off an entire shelf for T-scale, uh, but I could definitely add some T-scale. What what I'd probably uh, what I'd probably end up doing would be getting some uh, narrow gauge uh, stuff in here because you know once I cleared off some shelves, I'd have some narrow shelves to put narrow things on. Now I'm like trying to get them in the center when I put them down. So yes, now I'm starting to get a little, uh, a little OCD putting them in here. But this is good. I'm I'm happy with this. That's all that matters because it's my railroad. And that's what they say. And I know I'm missing all of this stuff in chat. Uh, Steve says no, Heath. It wouldn't. Funny fact: when I worked at uh, Ware Hauser, the number one safety issue was paper cutters. When I worked in the theater, we would have, uh, I think they were like two foot by two foot uh, hand paper cutters, like the ones that you just operate with your hands uh, to cut uh, the gel for the lamps. You would put colored gel in the lamps and it all would have to be cut by hand. So you'd get these 20 inch by 24 inch pieces of gel and you'd, uh, you'd cut them down by hand to be uh, the size you needed them. And I'm sure somebody at some point got hurt, but it was a lot less, a lot less common than I, than I guess I sort of, uh, suspected, uh, it would be, uh, this one's 3488. Put that one in there. So I guess at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter whether 3486 or 3488 goes on which box, but now it's marked and it'll forever have a home. 
So let's see what this one is. One, eight, seven, four, eight. Do I need to trim that a little bit? I don't need to, but I am gonna trim that. Is 33.45 coming out? I don't know what 33.45 is. Is that a question for me or a question for somebody else? It's hard to read and cut at the same time. Grand Central is, yes. <laughs> yes, Andrew, Grand Central is two blocks from Penn Station, but it is more on the east side. The six train does run through Grand Central and the one train does run through Penn Station. So <laughs> there we go, Joey's here. I know, I know Joey likes, uh, I think Joey and I are on the same page when it comes to our uh, level of particularness of things. So thank you, Joey, for saying uh, trim it. It needs to be a perfect fit because I agree. I agree. Uh, why do I have a bumper on the main line? Great question. Uh, Robert Darby was running uh, trains earlier and he ran the train down the main line off the uh, out of camera view. <laughs> and so he said, would you please put a bumper on it so I don't run it off there again, so. Yes. Well, oh, so these are pictures. These are real cars. We are putting the pictures inside the case so that when I wanna put the train back in the case, we've got that. So what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive with the knife. Uh, I could get Reader's Sister to help me. Uh, how can you see it from the end? Yeah, I, I know. In, in theory, um, on my shelves, uh, the stuff that's on the shelves, I basically know where everything is because I know where I put it on the shelves. So I'm not so much worried about needing to see it on the shelf or see it in the boxes or or any of that kind of stuff. It really is just for getting the car back in the right, um, you know, into the right jewel case. But you do bring up a good point. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna cut out a second one to go on the ends, although that would be, that would be kind of cool, right? Cut a, cut something smallish to go on the end. The this is really only an issue with older microtrain stuff. Most of the newer stuff, they did a much better job. Uh, the older stuff, they just put the microtrains part number. On the newer stuff, they put the microtrains part number and the road number in a lot of cases. So we're gonna cap the knife while we, uh, while we go uh, do a couple more of these. We can get some of this trash out of the way. Norman says you can shoot a life side photo of yourself, attach it to the front of the train room door so you won't wear you, so I'll know where I go, yes. A hundred percent. It's on the list to switch, there you go. Uh, it will be, it will be. Uh, Norman, you can go to Toronto and get a mini Heath made. Yeah, I might have to do that. Dave, I thought about, I thought about trying to, you know, make them perfect so that they fit in the center. And yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it. Um, I, don't mind, I don't mind if they slide back and forth a little bit. I, I know I just went through this whole thing about being, you know, really anal with stuff, but I'm not really. I mean, I am, I am with certain stuff. I don't know. Will I get my, uh, my OCD license revoked for not making them the correct length? Probably. I actually did think about it before I started the show tonight. I did have this thought of like, like figuring out what the exact size of these should be and measuring them all out and all that kind of stuff. And then I kind of went, nope, not going to do it. Not going to do it. Heath, please don't second guess yourself and redo it. Thank you, Norman. I uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try not to. Uh, so this part of the track over here is actually connected uh, on the motorman uh, as well. So that's part of why there's another uh, another stop there as well, is that it kind of 
kind of helps separate separate things as well. Yeah, I Dave, I know it will. I know. At at some point. Yeah. So one of the things I actually thought of doing too was, uh, so I could probably, if I like slid these out, I could probably get a third row in the center and then like save myself some paper. But then I'm kind of like, why would I need to really save paper? Uh, I just did regular paper because I knew that the car wasn't gonna actually touch the paper. I wasn't really worried about any like acid free uh, paper or any of that kind of stuff. I just, I just grabbed, uh, you know, it's just the regular paper. Uh, we have a color laser printer upstairs. So I, uh, you know, I did the photos down here, edited them, printed them upstairs. And then the next time I was upstairs, I just grabbed them and uh, brought them down. Question, when you took all the pictures, did you upload them to your inventory? I did not. Uh, that This has been something that a couple people keep talking about. And um, I haven't, but I do now have all the pictures, right? I mean, the, the pictures, at any point, the pictures can be manipulated now. I just got to put them in a, in a thing. <laughs> uh, yes, they will fade, but probably not in the amount of time that I'm going to be alive that I need to worry about it. I, it yes, it, if it was exposed... If it was exposed to sun and things like that, um, then I might worry about them fading. They're gonna be in a blue bin in the dark. And in the blue bin in the dark, they are probably not going to... Uh, um, oh. <laughs> uh, yes, John, see? See? We, we are doing original Original things here, only originality here. Uh, are you sure you don't want it on glossy paper since they're picture? Oh man, people are gonna, people are going to uh, send me up the river. Norman says, I personally think this is a great idea, but I organized my comb drawer. So see, see, I knew, I knew that by doing this, that people were gonna make fun of me. But at some point, one of you are going to post pictures of doing it yourself. Because as crazy of an idea as this is, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea. Especially when we get to these, uh, the picture cars. Because the picture cars don't have, don't have numbers. And yes, I can go online and I could, oh, this is interesting. Look at this. There are, there's the back, there's kind of two backs. The inside, inside one and then this extra outside one. Hmm, I didn't know that was going to be in there. Um, so yeah, so everyone, everyone's going to, I know, make me think I'm crazy. But then, you know, we're going to, people are going to, people are going to start doing this on their own. So we got three more. And so just for Dave, just for Dave, I'm going to cut these a little bit longer this time. We'll cut these a little bit longer so they fit in there just a little bit better. Uh, to, I know, <laughs> Bernard, are they ever not a tough crowd? Yeah, I don't really have OCD. I just, there's certain things that, this whole like inventory thing, I've really been struggling uh, with what I really want to do with it. And I think this is just sort of a middle ground uh, that enables me to kind of move forward without really knowing what, uh, what, I, want, what I want to do. Uh, I would, Tina, I, I would like to put uh, barcodes or QR codes or something on them and, and do it that way. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, I, you know. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying not to go too crazy. I'm trying to go just the right amount of crazy. I'm trying to go model railroader in the basement crazy, not model railroader in an eight foot by nine foot small room in New York City crazy. If you know what I mean. 
So we are, we're slicing and dicing here. So I'm just gonna cut all these out. What do we, what do we think of that? I'm just gonna cut all these out and then we'll, then we'll go and we'll figure out what boxes they go in. I think that's kind of the way to do it. And that one I just did not cut straight at all because I was cutting left-handed, not left-handed, but upside down and backwards. And all I needed to do was move the piece of paper and then I could cut it straight like that. I like this because a lot of jewel cases without the card description paper, exactly. Uh, I have a loose kept inventory in Excel I made myself, but with less than 50 pieces total. I had at one point a very detailed inventory of all of the circus cars that I had at one point when I was looking to pretty much complete the collection. And I would take the list with me to shows. And as I got closer and closer to completing the collection, I kind of stopped updating it and stopped carrying it. So I think there are probably a couple that I don't have, but at this point, I'm not really sure what they are. And I ended up starting to buy duplicates of stuff. So I, you know, I, I tried to stop uh, doing that, which, you know, worked moderately well, sort of, sort of moderately well. So if people can't hear it in the background, but um, I need to fix this camera somehow. That's a little bit better. So I think Robert's trying to move move the train. Uh, Robert Darby's trying to move the train over on the time saver. I can hear it going, but I don't really see it moving or not. Uh, but Robert's gonna be running the train on New Tracks modeling tomorrow night. Uh, so he's just been getting a little practice in, just uh, setting things up, learning to configure it and that sort of thing. Let's look at a couple comments. Yes, Mr. Grill Handy, right on the phone. You can download an Excel spreadsheet. Yep, I agree. Yeah, man, Shed Man, I would love, 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 love to go RFID. Uh, Darren, I missed the start of it. So real quick summary for those of you that are coming in now. What I did was I... I made an eight and a half by 11 square on my bench. I then went and put the trains in this eight and a half by 11 and took a picture of it. Then I cropped the image to the eight and a half by 11 and printed it out. Then now what I'm doing is I'm cutting the pieces out and I'm figuring out which box car they go with. I'm taking this box car out of here I'm putting it over on the layout somewhere. And I'm kind of running out of space. I usually only put seven. Usually I put seven boxcars on there, but tonight I'm putting more. Um, and then what I am doing is I'm putting the picture under. So there's the plastic that the car sits in, right? Like, so the car doesn't slide around in here. There's like a little piece of formed plastic. I'm pulling this out and I'm putting the picture underneath it. And the picture's got the, you know, the car number and everything on it. Oops. And we made it too long and now I've got to make it shorter. Um, so the picture's got the car number on it and everything. And it'll let me, it'll allow me to know which car goes back into which uh, jewel case by picture without having to, you know, read and figure it out the, uh, the hard way. Because we all know, after a long running session of trains, when you want to get stuff in the boxes, the last thing you want to have to do is read. So there we go. So now I've got that car 3250 that's over there. I've now got its jewel case right here. And we'll just do the same thing. Here's with the Great Northern one. And let me just do this real quick. I gotta make all these shorter. Uh, yeah, I I do need to I, I do need to do a better job at organizing. And I guess this is a little bit of a first step uh, for part of it. I do think this is gonna 
gonna hopefully inspire me to get a little bit closer to um, to getting it all done. But here we go now, Great Northern. So this train car is gonna come out, right? This picture is gonna go underneath here. Put the plastic back in. And now when I'm looking for what box this car goes in, I've got the picture, lines right up, plops right in. That's the plan for anybody that missed the beginning. Uh, scale ACL labels and reader by the, yeah, exactly. Uh, my inventory's in JMRI. I don't have a box for everything. I bought some items without the box. And I do have some items without the box, but for the most part, uh, for the most part, I've tried to get things uh, with boxes. Uh, I, I guess I figure, you know, in a lot of cases, if somebody's selling something with a box, I, for some reason, I feel like maybe it was taken care of a little bit better. Uh, whether that's true or not, you know, it's hard to say, but that's kind of the, it's kind of the theory uh, behind it. You just need, yeah, <laughs> you need a really small picture to put at the end of the car uh, so you can see it. That would be, uh, that would be hard. I just realized something. Look how off the color is on these. That color is pretty far off. On a lot of them, the color is pretty close, but this one's, uh, this one's pretty far off. It's okay. It's close enough. You know, the, the graphics are all in the same spot. You know, it's so it's, you know, it's pretty, it's, it, it's pretty close to being, you know, a, a pretty easy match there. So it's pretty good. Um, I just saw Rick come in. I see Dave P come in. There's a club in the UK that has barcodes under the engines and rolling stock and are scanned as they run in the layout. So operators know the location of, of them. Oh, did you stop it, Robert? I heard it, I, oh. I think I know what Robert did. He ran across a uh, frog in the wrong direction. So now uh, what I've got are some uh, circus trains. So we'll pull some of those out right now as well. The, uh, the next set that I'm doing are all the wood advertising cars. So this is all what they call their brown, uh, the brown set, I guess. There's a red set and there's a brown set. And this next one that I'm gonna work on is the brown set. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut more of these out and then I will go pull them off the shelf and we'll make it happen. Again, only Heath goes this far as going into a drawer uh, so you put the same car back in the same spot. Why well, don't only see this working for Heath, that special boy for New York? Well, probably because, well, I'm sure there are somebody else that this would, uh, that this would also work for. I mean, I didn't come up with the idea on my own. The only reason I came up with the idea is because, you know, one of the, one of the cases that I bought already had the picture on the bottom of it. So somebody else out there is doing this, uh, not just me. I might be doing it a little bit to the extreme here. I, I don't know, like, at the beginning I said like I've got all those cars to do. I don't know that I'm actually gonna do all those cars. I am gonna try and do all the ones though that don't have, um, you know, road numbers, right? Like uh, a lot of these uh, wood reefer cars just say, you know, car number one, car number two. And unless you know that car number one has a certain picture on it, there's no way to know which one goes in, in which box. So, Low Country saying hello. Uh, oh, Robert's learning the uncoupler spots now. Yeah, so Robert, I don't have frog juicers on the time saver. So if you run across a turnout uh, with the switch thrown in the wrong direction, you will short, uh, you'll short the layout out, which is what happened. But eventually I'll have uh, frog juices on them. 
Yeah, duplicates go into the paint shop. I wish. Uh, I thought next week was watching ISO flow through ballast. Maybe. Uh, easier to make it shorter than it is to make it longer. 100%. Uh, oh, I've already seen those. Uh, I've been here long enough to know that human is wasting paper. Should just enlarge the car number and place that in the end of the jewel case. Uh, so for those of us that weren't here at the start of the live stream, uh, the reason I can't just put the number on the end of the jewel case is because cars like this don't have a number. There's no, um, th there's no number on this car anywhere. So yes, this car is 047-00404, billboard car number four. But I don't know what billboard car number four is. So there's no, you know, there's no number. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a smart idea, but I just checked the boxes in a bigger box under the layout. Yeah. Uh, just trying to picture all the trees that suffered. Four pieces of paper so far. If you place boxes on top of boxes, how do you see the picture on top? Because I know, I know that this set of 20 boxes, or uh, t uh, 12, I know that this set of 12 boxes goes to this box car. So I know to pull out this 12. Then once you know that I have this 12, then it's easy to figure out which ones it are, is from there. So it's really very, very simple. Very simple. Very, very, very simple. So these are, um, these are all these wood, the wood reefers. Um, so I think this is a really cool set. I just don't run it as much because there's no way to identify these. Oh, look, see here, doubles. I do have doubles. So there's no way to really identify them uh, differently. And then this should be the, this should be the red set, but there's one more of the brown ones there. And then here's the, this is the red set. So <clears throat> I don't think I'm gonna put these on the layout now. So I am just gonna put the pieces of paper uh, in them. Before I start this set though, I do want to thank the people that are supporting the channel. Uh, those that have supported with super stickers, super chats, people that are members on YouTube, members on Patreon. Uh, please also consider supporting the sponsors that support this channel. I'll be back in 50 seconds for more, uh, for more paper nonsense. It's all about humanity. Yeah, John, exactly. At some point in the future, when all of these cars are out on the layout and I need to move the layout for some reason or need to do something, it'll just make putting everything back together, making sure that I have everything. And if I do ever need to sell anything, you know, it'll enable me to, uh, it'll enable me to keep, you know, keep all the like parts together and, uh, you know, bring, bring a little extra money because I have the right car in the right box and know it's in the right box. So, so yeah, there is a method uh, to my madness. 50 seconds, no, that's not, I don't take a bathroom break. I'm right here working, 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 working. Uh, so some of these didn't print out real great. So some of them are a little hard to see what they are. But you can tell, 
you can tell i just figured it out once you see the car next to the next to the printout it's really easy to say david exactly like i i wasn't really taking out as many cars as i really wanted to because um you know if i did ever want to put them back i kind of did want to get them in the in the right spot so this is I mean, I'm kind of joking about being OCD and whatnot, but I, I do think it uh, it keeps your collection at a certain level of organization that that I think is uh, I think is valuable. It's valuable for me, and uh, it'll be valuable when uh, when I need to move things because you know one day one day I hope to move to a uh, uh oh. One day I hope to move to a bigger space. And if I have a couple hundred cars out on the layout and I want to move, you know, it'd be better than just tossing them all in, a, in an empty box, right? So we had 71 people vote on the poll. And uh, so I said, do you keep your boxes, cases, uh, and put your rolling stock back in the correct boxes and cases? 42% of people say every piece has the correct box. So 42% of the people may or may not find this useful. Uh, let's see, some I keep, some I don't, 35%. Uh, I'm OCD, so you know the answer, 16%. And what did I, what did I miss? There should have been, there we go. 5% of people throw away all the boxes. You are the savages. Uh, Don says, I've kept every box, but they don't belong in the box. They should be running on the tracks. I agree, but, you know, I've got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of stuff to run on the tracks, and I want to be able to swap it out frequently. And while some of it will go in these boxes that I mentioned earlier that I have, uh, you know, some of it might go into, uh, into longer storage. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I think this is going to... Uh, work out nicely. Now, just like a lot of the projects on this railroad, we'll see if I actually get this finished or not, or uh, whether this goes the way of the dodo, as they say. But for now, for now, I'm thinking this is going to uh, benefit me greatly. See, so here we go, the two more. I'm going to do these two more, and uh, if people want to start uh, putting in things that they got going on, things that are coming up. Uh, if you don't know, we're planning an unofficial little meet and greet at uh, Timonium in the middle of October. Uh, Timonium, Maryland is a, a train show and the circus model builders put on a big display there. So I wanted to go down and see it. Uh, Ray Bobel is, lives in that area, so he's gonna be there. Tom's Trains and Things has family in the area, so he's going to be there. So if people want to come down, uh, it would be fun to, to just sort of, uh, you know, come hang out, check it out. And uh, it's the middle of October. Um, I don't know what else is going on. I got to get over to Liberty Science Center. They just put a new layout in over there. Oh, do I still have any G-Scale people here? So this locomotive the gears keep binding up on it. And I'm wondering uh, who here knows how to take this apart and swap the gear on it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just end up trying to figure it out myself, but if anybody actually knows how, reach out, say hello, let me know, all that goodness and stuff. Uh, so around eight o'clock, I'll be on new tracks tomorrow night. I am doing side tracks Sunday this weekend. Maybe there'll be more organization, who knows? Uh, Tom, of course, missed all of the unboxings. Uh, I got one thing unboxed within the hour. But uh, yeah, so uh, Sidetrack Sunday is Saturday. Um, lots of the things going on. I don't know what's happening, but the week's just getting started. So have a fantastic week, everybody. And uh, what do I say? From the city that never sleeps, Farewell, model citizens.
It's all about humanity. 